In 2019, a billion people got out of their homes, drove for miles and miles, and visited an IKEA store. However, most spent much more time than they planned, and even more left with an item they did not plan on buying. Apart from the 2.8 billion online visitors in 2019, the 1 billion physical store visitors spent an average of $42.18 at IKEA stores worldwide. In comparison, in the same year, each of Walmart's 14.3 billion visitors spent an average of $35.97. IKEA makes you want to drive for hours, spend more money and time inside the store, and leave with the stuff you cannot pronounce and never knew you wanted. The beauty of it all is, your IKEA experience is a carefully planned, beautifully executed neuromarketing masterpiece. Unlike Costco, which is often described as a scavenger hunt, the IKEA experience is intentionally boring and trivial. Every IKEA store follows the same map that starts at the showroom with everything in its natural setting then goes through the market hall to pick up several things you haven't planned on buying and finishes at the warehouse to pay while getting swayed by the smell of a fresh bakery. Every IKEA though, just like its map, comes with two more essentials, the environment and the service. The experience as well has two main goals, making you want to come to IKEA and once you are here, making you spend as much time as possible inside. When planning to go somewhere, the things you are likely to think about are traffic, parking, and for new parents, a babysitter. With a simple calculation, if going to the store involves heavy traffic, a metered parking, and a paid babysitter, you are more likely to stay in, and in this case, order online. The problem is, online shoppers only buy what they want. For IKEA, the 320,000 square feet store brings with itself an enormous parking lot. For example, the 456,000 square feet store in Burbank, California comes with a free parking lot for 1,700 cars. If you get a free parking space and a certified play area where you can shamelessly leave your kids for free, you are incentivized to make the trip. However, the play area serves a far greater purpose than a mere incentive to visit the store. Children, bless their hearts, are the worst shopping buddies you can imagine. They get bored easily, nag you, and most importantly, take your focus away from shopping. With no child to make you want to get out of the store faster, IKEA takes the lead and guides you through the store in a one-way route designed to show you everything. Giving up control of where you go inside the store means letting the store decide what you see. And what you see is perfectly planned to influence you into an impulse buy. The showroom is always designed in a way that you find things in their natural environment. For example, IKEA showrooms have whole living rooms set up with such attention to detail that when you visit the store, the couch seems to go perfectly with the rug, and the table, and the vase, and the floor lamp, and everything around it. If you buy the couch, why not add the rug and the vase too? It complements the couch so well. Seeing everything in the place you would have it inside your house makes the whole experience realistic. More importantly, having the setting in a real life environment allows to place expensive things next to extremely expensive ones, effectively making you feel like they're dirt cheap. For this living room, for example, a similar floor lamp might cost $29 on Amazon, but at Amazon, you see it next to the one that costs $15. At IKEA though, when you see it next to a $599 sofa and a $399 armchair, the $59 LED floor lamp or even the $129 mirror seems like a steal. More importantly, because you are doing a one-way guided shopping, you will think, just in case I want it later, I don't want to come all the way back. And eventually, you decide to get it. And the moment you decide to get it, you commit an impulse buy which turns your whole shopping mindset from what do I need to buy to what more should I get. Then there is the cheap food. According to a research from the University of Minnesota, hungry people are more likely to pull out their credit cards and spend more money while shopping than others, even for things they are not crazy about. 
In the study, hungrier shoppers spent an average of 64% more money than those less hungry. But at IKEA, the food does not only exist, but is also very cheap. Even the founder, Ingvar Komprad, is known for saying, you can't do business with someone on an empty stomach. Any mediocre store would either keep you hungry or better yet, serve you an expensive food. However, for IKEA, ripping you off today with expensive food means you won't come back tomorrow. And more importantly, the feeling of trust and reliance on the affordable price fades. By contrast, no food means you will leave much earlier than the store wants you to. But cheap yet quality food will make your mind associate the store with affordability and quality. At the end of the day, your mind won't relate IKEA to the $599 couch, but to the $5.99 meatballs and gravy, vegetables and mashed potatoes. When the time comes, as well, you cannot be let go with the stress of making a payment. Everything about your IKEA experience must unequivocally stay cheap but good. Thus, the sweet bakery smell. These bakeries are strategically located at checkouts, so you would 1. Smell the sweet scent of baking and sugar, which takes out the stress of paying, and 2. Pick up something sweet to conclude your IKEA experience with. Effectively, the next time, you will be incentivized to drive for miles, spend hours, and pay hundreds of dollars for the IKEA experience. If you liked this video, consider subscribing for more, giving it a thumbs up, and checking out these other videos.